Hey everybody, thanks for joining in on IV Racing's channel. Uh, really appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, if you haven't been here in a while, I know we haven't posted videos uh, in a long time, but we're going to get back into weekly content um, up to our big event that we're having in February, Sick Week. It's a drag week event. We want to bring you guys along. One of the big changes that we're doing is we're actually going to be changing around the front hub and brake assembly on our Mazda RX-7 rotary power drag car. Uh, with that, we're doing aerospace design, uh, front drag assembly, four piston calipers. We'll go through, do an unboxing on those today for you right now, show you what we're going to be doing on those, uh, what those brakes are going to do for us on the quarter mile to give us that little bit better ET and go through that install procedure as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, and what do we got to do? Smash that like button. Yeah. Without further ado, let's just take a look at what we got here. It's going to be an unboxing and how-to video this, this time around. Um, we're using aerospace components. I haven't had a chance to actually open this. I just got the package today. So we're going to see what we got. It's supposed to be a drag kit, four-piston front caliper. And we can kind of go through as well, even on the existing OEM caliper setup and, we, and wheel hub assembly as to why I'm getting this, why this is so important to have when you're drag racing. Um, you want to be able to have very good rollout on your front tires and not a whole lot of drag. So these are supposed to be able to do that. So I'm really excited to see what they have. Aerospace is a uh, Florida company. It's in Florida. So with these guys, they actually uh, have there is, everything's made in the U.S. They have a great machine shop in Florida. I reviewed a lot of different wheel hub assemblies, brake kits, and things like that. And this seems to be like the best. Oh, they just lost me at the peanuts. I hate packing peanuts. All right, so we're going to have to just pull everything out of here first so I can see what we got. And then i got to get rid of this amount of peanuts because I don't want them all over the floor. These look like brake calipers, or feel like brake calipers, in the shape of a brake caliper in a bag. We got some, some wheel hooks, bearing seals, hardware, we got more hardware. This is a lot of stuff in here. I bet you these are brake pads. And I do believe that they use Hawk HP brake pads as well with all of their systems. I'm curious with their bearings. I know those look like regular wheel hub bearings. They said that they do have another upgrade to their wheel bearings. They're supposed to be ceramic ball bearings. So those are supposed to be really good for the uh, rollout on the front wheels. But we did not get those. Ooh, instructions. We'll keep those around just in case. Got a couple stickers, cool. And, oh yeah. Nice rotor. And we got another rotor in here. And that looks to be about it. So I can get rid of this box of peanuts. So I don't like that. We'll throw that over here. All right, so we got our two rotors. We'll kind of go through here what I think these are gonna be our wheel hubs. Nice billet wheel hub. Oh yeah, that, that is definitely nice. Very, very nice piece. And we got our other wheel hub here. And these kits don't really cost a whole lot either when you look at replacing the entire front brake and hub assembly. So, I mean, you can get all of this for under a thousand bucks, and it comes with everything that you need. Um, just basically take out your old hub assembly, put this on, put on your brake calipers, bleed it, and you're ready to go. Oh, wow, that is a nice piece. This is what we were looking for. So, a four piston front brake caliper. Um, looks like we got two bleeder or a bleeder option and then that's where our brake line goes in top feed brake pad so that's really cool i do like that it's almost like a snowmobile or a, a motorcycle how you can 
uh, top loader for your brake pads. Really quick, easy way to do pads on any application. Um, so you do like that. hub mounts, I'm assuming. So this is what's going to bolt on to adapt from our RX-7 front wheel hub to their wheel hub are these guys right here. So this is what makes the magic for this to bolt on. So that's cool. And then these got to be over guys. I'm curious what kind that they gave me because I looked online at a couple different types and they don't have these ones marked. I'll have to look to see what these part numbers are. But I believe that these ones are their low heat, mid heat um, brake pad, which these things stop amazing. I have Hawk HPs on stock calipers and they perform phenomenal. So um, those are vented, these are not vented. That's the only concern that I have is to the stopping because we do use this not only on drag when you're not supposed to use non vented rotors on. Uh, regular roads on street on street driving but uh, for the amount of street driving that we do a few thousand miles a year this will perform as long as we're not you know constantly on the brakes that's going to be like you know going down hills things of that nature when we go to like rocky mountain race week we'll end up using trailer brakes now for a trailer if we tow a trailer versus before we had vented rotors front and back so we didn't have to have trailer brakes, but I still didn't like it that way. After doing that event this past year, changing that up, definitely going trailer brakes next time. So not having vented rotors in the front, I'm not as concerned on. I do want the stopping power. The main reason is, and, and I'll show you this uh, right now, is going to be the actual uh, run out of the front tire when you spin it. Just that drag that it has on the uh, front from the brakes riding on the current rotor setup that it is right now and then we can compare that to what these will do so let's take a look at that so we have my stock wheel assembly that's on here right now i'm just going to show you guys just a quick little test as to why i'm going to switch this out so if i spin this wheel you can definitely hear uh and i can hear i don't know if you guys can hear but you can hear that it's got somewhat of a, a drag on there the caliper and the pads are just riding on that rotor just a little bit so that gives resistance that roll resistance ends up to et time when you're doing a quarter mile so we're trying to alleviate that and make it so that we just have nice easy free spin of this wheel so that when we're riding down the track we don't have that issue so we're going to take this wheel off and disassemble everything um, if i run into anything weird uh, i'll stop the time lapse and we'll just kind of go through and kind of show you guys what that looks like. But otherwise, I'm just gonna run a time lapse through of the disassembly until we can get to the point of when we're actually gonna uh, put on the new aerospace kit. So check this out. All right, so we got both the wheel hubs off. Uh, the instructions for the aerospace basically just wants you to tear them down the spindle. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. So these are just OEM Mazda RX-7 front spindles uh, hubs. And uh, the only thing that I did is I just put in bigger wheel studs to be able to accommodate for drag wheels because they have to be a certain protrusion for the uh, stud, which is unfortunate that uh, these studs are different than the ones supplied in the aerospace kit. So now I'm going to have to get new wheel lugs as well, which I wasn't planning on, um, but I knew that there was gonna be something that was gonna be not the same that I was gonna end up having to get. So we're not gonna be able to put the wheels on it, unfortunately, and get it on the ground yet in this uh, uh, today. But before the video's over, I'll make sure that I get the wheel lugs and we'll finish and upload the video once we actually have the wheel studs. So. Um, but we'll get going on taking this off. So you gotta just get the dust cap 
off. And the dust cap, if we can get this guy, it will get us to where we need to get the bearings and hopefully get this hub off and see what's inside. I haven't done one of these in, gosh, I don't even know how many years it's been since I've done a wheel hub assembly on these. I think I checked these like maybe like six years ago. <laughs> so I don't check these very often, but <clears throat> they, they weren't failing me, so wasn't uh, an issue there. But yeah, so we got a little bit of grease in there. Oh, the grease looks good. There's not a whole lot of play, so that's good. So everything's good there. We got our cotter pin. Oh, oh my god, this guy out of here. underneath come on there use a flat head to pry that out there it is all right so these are extremely dirty part of the job i'll have to get some grease tomorrow as well um just some new stuff i only have assembly lube grease and i want to use actual wheel bearing like a lithium style grease in these when i reassemble them as to what the instructions ask for so sometimes it works better if you just use the tip of these guys sometimes not We'll get her. Just has to get it aligned to be the same size as the hole I'm trying to be able to get it through. So, just gonna give it a little tap on one side here. Just to get that pin past that little hump area. She should come right through. Uh, almost. There it is. So all this stuff, hopefully we're not, I don't think that we're going to have to reuse it. I think it comes with all the hardware in there for the new one. I would doubt that they'd have re reuse. And you don't really want to reuse cotter pins anyways. Get new stuff if you can. On here, oh my gosh, it spins right off. So this is the dirty part. Um, Briston, if you could, there's a, a box of rags over there. Will you grab me a couple of blue rags out of that box? So we're gonna spin this guy off. Family's helping me, gotta love it. So we'll take that. Ooh. And it's that easy. So I'm just gonna keep all the bearings and everything contained in here. Um, looks like the seal, I mean, the seal is definitely working. Um, you can see it's definitely been spitting out some of the grease, which really hasn't done a whole lot in here. It's not crazy dirty or anything like that. Um, thank you, Briston. This is how when you ask kids for a rag, this is what you get. If anybody's ever asked a kid for a paper towel before, and they pull it off or hey can you grab me some toilet paper and they're like oh yeah i'm gonna do that put your finger in that one nah, i'm just kidding <laughs> thank you for your help <laughs> but yeah that'll happen all right so we'll clean this guy off it's pretty straightforward and easy i mean arc seven second generation arc seven front spindles i mean just like everything else right it's one of the things too a lot of stipulations that people have with RX-7s is mainly the rotary engines, but everything else about RX-7s, everybody else can relate to. It's one of the greatest chassis, in my opinion, uh, RX-7s are for any type of engine. So whether people, you know, do a different swap in it or whatever, I mean, I'm not like sacrilegious of 
engines and what needs to go in what car, so I don't really care. I, I'm just a rotary guy, so that's just what I like. But these, I mean, anybody can relate to it, right? <clears throat> so front spindle, so they all come apart the same, pretty easy to work on. Um, and then with the kit, we'll basically just assemble everything uh, with uh, how the instructions provide, Loctite, the correct grease, I'll have to get that. Um, but we'll take apart the other one and then we'll get back to the reassembly here on um, doing one and we'll basically do the assembly on one and then I'll do the other one off camera and then we'll get everything put back on the car and see how it goes. Um, I got to see what the thread pitch is on these new studs uh, and then I got to get um, some lugs for my weld race wheels. So that's about the only holdup that I feel like we're going to have on this deal, uh, but we'll continue on. All right, it's a new day. Uh, we did have a chance to run by the auto parts store. I grabbed some uh, gray molly grease as well as some Loctite, some brake line fitting stuff that we're gonna need, and then also tap. So a couple of things that I ran into after running and basically mocking up everything as it says in the instructions, kind of mock it through, um, get it set up, is the bracket that bolts the caliper on this isn't just a bolt-in kit there is some actual fabrication work that needs to be done one thing is cutting off the brackets that mount the oem caliper to be able to have the clearance so that this isn't running into anything and then two the bolts that are provided are a little bit bigger so these are three by 16 and obviously we're using mazda which is metric thread normally so we will have to drill and tap where we're at for the uh, tie rod side tie rod end side because that's the hardware provided is not long enough to go all the way through with the lock nuts that they give you. So I'll just drill and tap that. The other three locations, bolt locations, those ones are fine. We can actually just drill those all the way through, not have an issue, be able to put a nut on the back side. They give you the hardware, it's long enough to be able to do that. But these two holes, the one on the tie rod side and then the one on the upper side on the back, uh, are actually perfectly lined up. The other two are kind of like off, like oblong a little bit. So I'll end up actually using just a die grinder instead of drilling them through. I'll just basically bolt those on and then just grind those out. Um, so that will be able to just run the bolt through and not have some kind of like weird oblong or huge giant enormous hole that I have to fill. So that's the way that we can get the caliper bracket bolted on to run through and get the caliper. And then uh, one thing I did off camera just to kind of get set up on both of these is I just wanted to run the hardware on. And they give you uh, their uh, half inch by 20 wheel studs. These take red Loctite as well as their torque down 50 foot pounds. And then the uh, rotor bracket or the rotor itself is bolted off. And that one's 30 to 40 foot pounds um, for the hardware that's provided for that. Also red Loctite. It seems like red Loctite in, on any of the bolts that are provided here. You just want to use red Loctite. A couple of the other things that um, I found is they don't provide any of the hardware for your spindle. So you will be reusing your factory uh, washer as well as nut and then your uh, locker, your keeper nut for the cotter pin. So I did get new cotter pins. Um, those are pretty easy to come by at any you know auto or Home Depot type store. And then the other big thing was your brake lines. So on the brake line side of it, they come with an eighth inch MPT is what this thread pitch is. And they don't really make at or sell at any of my local auto parts store a eighth inch MPT to a metric style um, uh, inverted flare fit or inverted brake line fitting. So I wasn't able to get that. I ended up getting a standard. So with that is just a 316s I believe by 24 so instead of getting a line and, and, and that whole deal and adapting it I just basically got the fittings and some copper line and flared it to the 316 by 24 so I can punch that in there and then I'll have that mounted on the car and then I can actually just bend this and then this side will be to mate to my Mazda OEM which is the M10 by 1.0 so that's what I'll be doing um, for you guys today is getting this kind of all set up, pre-assembled. I'll just do a quick time lapse of cutting this stuff off, drilling these out, tapping that hole, getting this basically ready to accept the rotor and the caliper with our caliper um, adapter. So once we get there, we'll fit it on the car and see what we're at. Uh, I do know that we are gonna also be saving some weight here as well. I had a chance to weigh this 
if you want, take a look right here. So this is the factory stuff that we had taken off the car. So we have the factory hub, the rotor, and the caliper with brakes and stuff in there. So with all that stuff, uh, the weight there was 33 pounds. So I did weigh everything that we have here. Um, and I did weigh this with the caliper and stuff. So I was equal weight across the board of what we're gonna be keeping on the front. Um, I was 22 pounds. That's a saving of 11 pounds per side. So 22 pounds weight saving. And then hopefully we'll have no more drag and that wheel will just, you know, continue to just keep spinning and spinning and spinning. So that's what we got. We'll start with the time lapse here. All right, so we have the spindle all modified, drilled out, ready to accept our new caliper bracket for the hub and the brakes. And now what we need to do is we need to put our wheel bearings into our hub assembly, grease them up and get it ready to install the caliper bracket and then the hub and then the caliper on, make our brake line. So we'll pack all of our grease uh, in the bearings, insert the bearings, um, I'll go through how we install the actual caliper bracket because it's kind of a process to make sure that you can get the suspension bolts and everything passed and be able to lock them down. Um, but bearing is pretty easy. And All right, so we got the spindle back on. Um, we got our caliper bracket, use our uh, hardware. The only, you know, three holes, we have the lock nuts on the backside and then we just drilled and tapped the tie rod end spot. So everything's nice and secure here. Um, we test fit our wheel hub, everything looks good there. So I mean, we'll just throw that on and get ready to assemble this guy. With that, um, we can actually show you what the um, way that I uh, did, the method that I used for spacing off the caliper to make sure that the shims and everything are good um, and just an easy way of doing it. And then from that point, we'll get the caliper uh, uh, completely bled with our brake lines and all that good jazz. We'll finish making a brake line, um, throw the pads in, and we should be done with this job and show you what the new uh, setup looks like once we actually act, spin the wheel just to see that resistance if there's any there. So super excited, almost done here. About oh, 10 more minutes, we'll have this guy wrapped up. All right, so we have the hub assembly all put on, uh, the nut, the cotter pin, everything's on there. Um, dust caps on. Moving on to the caliper, uh, we're gonna actually check. This is all bolted down dry, no pads in or anything. I didn't put any Loctite in it yet. Um, but there's four standoffs in each corner on the inside here. And you can grab a set of feeler gauges. This is the way that I've found to be the, the easiest, best, fast, most effective way. I'm sure that there's you know somebody on YouTube that's gonna correct me, but um, this way has worked for me. And all that I do, and it doesn't matter how many of these or which sizes that you use because you have a whole bag of uh, shims that you can use just in case. But you basically just wanna find out with your feeler gauge on these standoffs. And if you want, come in close here. I don't know if you can see this with, uh, or if we need some light, but there's basically a standoff right here. Uh, if you look right inside, can you see that where that feeler gauge is coming through? So with that, right now, we're just about touching it with the feeler gauge. So I'm gonna add just one more, just so that I can, it's almost like gap in a spark plug. Basically, we just wanna find out what that tolerance is. Oop, that's a little bit too tight. What that tolerance is in between there, and then we're going to spec that across all of these four points. Oh, there we go. So that one's just barely rubbing. So then we're gonna move over to the other side, and then that side, can't even fit it through. This one on top, just barely rubbing. And then this side, I can't even fit it through, it's just hitting. So what that means is I need to be able to space this uh, towards the car. So I need to be able to shim it and make it so that I'm gonna put some shims in between where I'm actually bolting it down. And then we're gonna just basically repeat the process with these shims until basically I'm even equal on all four sides um, where I can just basically feel it all the way through there and uh, have the same tolerance across all four points. So I'll get that dialed in here and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we got the shims all lined up. Everything's good there, good clearance. 
on both sides with the feeler gauges. So now we can just drop in our brake pads, which is awesome. You just take the little pin out basically, bolt, and then you just drop these guys in there and then they can only go in so far. So they just drop right in. That's why I love these things. It reminds me of my snowmobile, literally. And then that's it. That's how you do brakes. So it's that easy. Now in here, there is a um, lock nut on the other side. So you really don't have to torque this down very hard. Uh, you just basically want to bottom it out. And then um, with that, you should be good to go. Let me just get this guy on here. Oh, <laughs> long Allen. All right, there we go. So get that guy ran in. And then I'll show you what I had to do for the brake line. So that's the last step here is just running the brake line. Then we can put the wheel on and I can show you guys what we got for the roll. All right, so now that we're done with the brake pads and got all that stuff squared away, we have to get our brake line. Now remember, um, it went from the three, uh, eighth inch MPT fitting into the caliper um, to a standard, um, what was it, 3 sixteenths by 24. So we have to now change that and convert it to metric, to Mazda. So I do have, um, what is this? The uh, stainless steel brake lines. So I have decent brake lines for here. They're not the standard, like the rubber stuff. So that's nice. And I relocated the bracket um, with my coilovers. I don't have the bracket like you do on a stock car. So I just basically flipped it over, made it so I can just run the bracket right here. And then on this guy, so I basically just looped this around off the eighth inch NPT, which is gonna be right here. So I can just basically run that guy in there and then figure out where this guy goes, which I basically kind of had it perfectly set up to go right here. So that guy will go right in there. So the only thing that I really have to do is now um, throw a flare uh, for the M10 by 1.0, I believe is what these are. Um, and then I'll be able to uh, run that guy right in there. So we'll be able to bleed the brakes and be done with that. So as soon as we get done, Doing the bubble flare, uh, inverted flare, then we'll throw the wheel on and see what this guy, see what it's like. I mean, it should be a lot better. Run through, bleed brakes, and we are done with this job. And that's your aerospace brake kit. So pretty straightforward and easy there for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, huh, I should say we aren't gonna end it there. Let's throw the wheel on here and actually see if this did its job. So let's check it out. <clears throat> so we got the aerospace component brake kit on for the FC. Uh, I love it, it is lighter, it has better rollout, um, less resistance. I feel like we're gonna have really good stopping power on here. Um, super easy to install. I mean, it definitely has a couple steps extra in there that aren't the instructions, but really what isn't when you're basically just doing a complete modified break, uh, remake, you know? So with that, without further ado, that is just unreal. So super happy with that. I feel like that's gonna increase uh, or decrease our ET on the car, give us maybe a ten, two tenths extra, which could possibly then get us into the eights. That's what our goal is for sick week. We wanna be able to at least make one eight second pass and run consistently in the nine. So hopefully you guys like, subscribe, enjoy this journey with us, be able to be part of it with me and my family, and uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks.